Hell yeah. Zero drop frames. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Hashtag. I'm here at Hashtag Studios Inside Hashtag Arena, and I'm about to start guest hosting as the best guest of all time on a show called Smash Cut, uh, broadcasting here from the arena. That's right, folks. Social media. <laughs> I think you've waited long enough. <laughs> Maybe we should start the show. Let's not stand on ceremony, mate. Let's start the show. We would be honored if you would join us. Oh, what's this? Oh, what? Hello? Hold on. Hello? Is this on? Is this thing on? Oh my god. Hashtag is back on a podcast? Get out. You get right out of town. <laughs> what's up, everybody? It's your boy Hashtag. Broadcasting live from Hashtag Studios inside the amazing Hashtag Arena. And to my left is a guy who's still in the car. Currently, he is invisible. Uh... Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's what's happening. So as you know, this is Smash Cut, as you can see from this sick logo that I had designed, uh, courtesy of Rihanna Dorsey, our uh, Eisner-nominated uh, comic book artist from Hashtag Comics. Kind of cool that she did that for us. She's working on a novel. <laughs> I don't even know what to do. This is crazy. This is cr I don't. You know what? This is very exciting. Um, hold on one second. Uh, so what's happening right now is um, John's on his way. I probably took John's chair too. Although I think this is uh, I mean, no, this is this is Travis's chair. But yeah, so we're uh, we're gonna talk about all kinds of good stuff today, folks. All kinds of good stuff. If you know me, I'm hashtag from twitch.tv slash hey hashtag. And now, uh, what is twitch.tv slash uh, hashtag arena? Because that's where we are, and that's where everything is going to be. That's where, like, the cool stuff is going to happen. It's going to be amazing. And all the good stuff happening right here is also being broadcast live. Technically, it's over there. By the way, I'm pointing to you on the screen. But for me, it's over there because our cameras are mirrored. So way over there. What's happening right now is I can hear the clicking in the background. I can hear the clicking of Tommy trying to get the new high score in Pac-Man right now. That's right. There's an arcade here. <laughs> this is a really good place to work. Interns. Holler at me if you want. Um, but yeah, it's a really good place to work. And I'm padding right now, so I basically have to pad for the next, I think, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. I don't know if John will be here shortly, soon enough. Uh, I'm going to do one more social shout outery uh, to get people to, to jump in and say hello. So you'll have to bear with me because we're going to go ahead and uh, as, we, as we start the show, we're going to say, come keep me company on my Twitch guest, that is not how you spell Twitch, T-W-I-T-C-H, guest hosting. If you come into the arena, say hello, say hi, or hey hashtag, or what's Um If you want to uh, say hello, I'm doing a Twitter post right now, it's super professional, uh, Twitch, that is not how you spell Twitch, Twitch. Nope, not that either. Twitch.tv slash, what is this? NME Live. 
Nice. Come keep me company on my Twitch guest hosting. Boom. Tweet it to the world. That's right, folks. So, uh, if you're new to this, uh, this is Smash Cut, as you see underneath. If you're new to the show, if you're just here hanging out, uh, wanted to keep me company, if you came in from my Instagram, if you came in from my Twitter, that would have been amazing if you had done that actually before I came in. Oh, coming in from Studio B. Da -na -da -da -na -na. <laughs> it's Good. John. What's up, everybody? <laughs> This is Crazy day. John uh, coming at you live uh, with me uh, from the Smash Tag HQ, which is... Uh, Smash Tag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, big like thank you to there? Drew for... Uh, I'm going to fix my headphones here, but big thank you to Drew for uh, covering while we're running a little bit late uh, today. Um, a lot to go over, so you keep going. I, I yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's good. You know, we have... Um, we had, uh, so there was, as, as you may or may not know, uh, John is from the Punch Drunk Critics, uh, punchdrunkcritics.com. Great, great website for you to check out. Um, and, uh, and so is the guy that normally sits in this seat. Uh, much better looking, obviously. Wait, uh, he is. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I know. I know. Uh, Travis is in San Diego. Yeah. Uh, and he is currently... Um, I think he just left Hall H or something like that and is road tripping back up the wilds of California uh, to go to L.A. Uh, to, to fly back to the, the sanctity that is home. Yeah, we were um, trying to get him on the show from Hall H, but uh, as you can see, we started a little bit late. So uh, mm, we missed mm, out on that, but we still have a mm, lot to talk about mm, from uh, Comic-Con. Mm, do, no, do we have audio? Do a little bit. What? I don't see the levels going up and down. Oh, that's desktop audio. Oh. Our levels are, would be down here under where the mic audio is. Yeah, so uh, right just, there. Just, just coming in in this uh, armchair quarterback and everything. Yeah, you know? yeah. No, you come in and tell me how to run my studio. Yeah, That'll be good. Yeah, you could do the sound checks and make sure everything's loaded, too. Oh, wait. <clears throat> that's what I'm supposed to do, right? I yeah. come in late and then uh, ask you how everything... Uh, and then take you know, credit for take literally credit. everything. Yeah. yeah, no, that's perfect. Um, I hung this very well. You, uh, you know what? That yeah. was so good. And it, I, I bet it took you several tries trying to figure out no, it which... No, just one. I'm just really one? Good at it. Oh, I'm, my God. Because awesome. yeah. I heard that it took four different tries and three different types of adhesive uh, to be able to figure out how to get those panels to actually work. Because what you first tried to do was you tried to use this really cool sound barrier material. Yeah. Um, that is uh, absolutely amazing, but it's super duper heavy, so it won't stay on to stuff like this, which is a wall, uh, without uh, nail tacking. Yes. Um, but then what happens is you realize the uh, the that that's going to be too heavy and will pull the drywall off. Um, this week's episode of How to uh, uh, Fashion <laughs> Your Studio is brought to you by. <laughs> I have uh, built four studios, and this one was entirely the most difficult. Yeah. Uh, only because uh, we didn't want to take down any walls. We built some walls um, to be able to sort of partition the studio off. But outside of that, uh, everything else kind of had to be done willy nilly. Um, well, it looks good. Everything. Yeah. Everything looks good. Well, thank you, John. Um, I appreciate you. Big news in the box office. We'll just get right into it. Uh oh. Um, so, uh, da -na -na, da -na. Oh, wait, in, 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 in a, a turn of events that almost had to be planned in some some way, uh, Avengers Endgame crossed Avatar as the biggest uh, earning movie of all time. Took the lead worldwide during their Hall H panel, which was uh, I don't know if it was, it was actually sold during that, but the announcement was made there. It happened this weekend. So Interesting. It's been out for for you know how many months now, and then for eleven for the eleven months, and then for uh, for them to cross the San Diego Comic Con is just more of the the godly wonder that comes down on Marvel mm. uh, as they go. Well, because, I mean, if, if, I mean, and we can all agree, if anyone needs more money, it's Disney. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. You forget, I mean, it's brought up all the time, but you still forget how many things they, like, if it's popular, they own it, pretty much. Yeah, pretty, yeah. Pretty, you know, they don't own hashtag the yet. They don't have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> give us a shout. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, you know, that, that was... One of the biggest things in the box office this weekend, Lion King, came out uh, 186 million. I think was the uh, the last count I saw. Wow. Uh, for Lion King. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. I'd say it's pretty damn good. I mean, yeah. I think everybody was expecting it to end all end up taking all the money, but wait, um, did you say Lion King? Yes, Lion King. Hey. There you go. That's am I'm that is amazing. You should go on Broadway. To do that okay. Time this comes up. Oh, another picture. Uh -huh. No, I'm just <laughs> so. 
Elijah's well, from the day we arrived on this planet and blinking stepped into the sun. Yes, yes. Everything the sun touches is our kingdom. Yeah. But uh, So the live-action version of Lion King came out this weekend. Uh, I know you're going to see it Look later. Look at those today. adorable little guys. Yeah, they, really, they really are. I mean, it's the mo- I, I figured it would get some hate. Uh, I really disliked this whole thing. Uh, and I apologize to any of our listeners that are um, turned off by me saying this, but I really hate the people that are just trashing anything that uh, is ruining their childhood. And mm. even further so, the people I've seen far too many adults going to see Lion King, Toy Story 4, uh, oh. you know, anything like that, and then complaining, why are these people bringing their kids? This movie's for us, this is from our generation. No dipshit. Who said it's, that? It's, people, it, it's all over social media every time. Oh, it's crazy. Guys. And it, it just shows this disconnect. But it, it was, th- there were some things about it I didn't like. Um, oh, I, right, because you just saw it with the kids today. Yeah, well, yes. Yeah, I'm going to see it at 4 p.m. I saw it again this morning. Which, which is uh, why we had a hard start. It. Yes. Um, so, uh, and, and we're going to be a little short today just so you can get out of here and, and see the movie. But, um. It, it's, it does have a couple little problems, certain things I didn't like. And honestly, if I'm, if I'm looking at it objectively, the things I didn't like was when I was comparing it to the original. Things I liked sure, better about the original. Sure. And really, well, in this one, Scar wins, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, but, uh, it, it, I haven't seen it. That's not a spoiler. That, that's one of, one of the things that's impossible to do. And you, know, you really should look at each movie, whether it's a sequel, a remake, or whatever, it, through its own lens. But it, it's really impossible. I, it's, it's history is part of what it is, so... I don't think it's a bad thing to compare it, but uh, on its own, the movie was great. It looks amazing. I mean, just I mean, it vi- just from the trailer and from all the images I've seen, it's yeah. just visually stunning. I mean, look at that. There, that's yeah. a baby lion cub. There are very, very few moments in this movie where you could possibly forget that. I mean, you could possibly forget rip- that animals can't talk. Exactly. Wow. And you, where you could actually realize that oh, this is a computer generated. You can get completely lost in the visuals in this movie. Yeah, but it was was it mocap? Or was it all digital? I honestly don't know. I, it, it would have been... Because, like, for, for Planet of the Apes, they had guys running around and right. things. But for this, I mean, it's, it's animals. I, I, I don't think they had, like, Donald Glover, like, walking right. around on all fours. Like, that would have been I awkward. I want to say it was completely digital only because one of the... the I don't even want to say failing points. One of the, uh, one of the lesser points in the movie is the, the, the facial expressions. There's not so much expression. I mean, they're lions. They're not supposed to, but... Um, and and the uh, the voice matching, you know, mocap, you get you get almost an exact, right? Copy because of it is literally, yeah, it's, it's literally it's mimicking their, face. their facial motions and all that stuff. Yeah, and and w- you know, in the trailers, I was kind of kind of thrown thrown back by uh, Beyonce's performance as Nala. Uh, there was something about it; it didn't fit. It, it wasn't that pronounced in the movie. Uh, mm-hmm. It was actually uh, a lot less jarring to see. But still, there were some points where either the voice didn't match what you thought that line should look like. I guess <laughs> sound like, or or it just interesting. The, the uh, the voice didn't match the mouth movement, so it was shoot. A little so off. it kind it was. So I had the same issues with the uh, Jungle Book live action. That like the yeah. the some of the mouth movements mm-hmm. while they were probably true to form from what animals could do. Yeah, they, you uh, know, and might have looked super weird if it like had gone like with a full like mouth like yeah. movement kind of thing. But it, it ends up looking like more of like a a lip twitch kind of deal. Right, right, and, yeah, and it you can't. It's almost like a bad, you know, Chopsaki movie. That, yeah, you know, it does, it absolutely. But, bad I mean, kung fu movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> and, you know, if you're going to get offended over that, whatever. Um, no, it's, I, I do. I've, I have called it Chopsaki Fu before because that was, it was actually from a kung fu movie that I saw that line. Right. But uh, so the, the movie is, is really great. There's a couple things that they add. I was kind of surprised in the fact that, you know, this movie's a good 40 minutes longer, uh, I think, than the original Lion oh, King. Oh, oh, God. All the animated movies it? are two between... Two and change? Two and, two and a quarter? Two even. It's, it's, oh, it's, it's a two, two even. even. Okay. Uh, and uh, most animated movies are between, like, 70 and yep, 90 70 to minutes 90. Most. Yep. Uh, and with all these live actions, they always pat them on. You can always find one or two extra scenes. But in this one, and it was kind of a benefit and a failure at some point. Okay. At some points that uh, they just extended stuff, so you, it, you didn't realize you were watching anything new. Uh, for instance, the uh, the uh, I just can't wait to be king song. Uh, just or no, I'm sorry. Can't the wait Hakuna, to be actually, king. that one, yeah, that 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 it one. Look now I think about it, all the musical numbers right. were extended, um, and it, it provided a really cool chance for them to show I'm more, of the, uh, more of the more of the landscape and more of the animals and stuff like that. Uh, so that that was really cool, but then it, it also kind of dragged the movie on a little bit. Um, if you are bringing um, if you are bringing kids to the movie. 
that's where I think the failing of making it longer is because mm-hmm. if it is for kids, as somebody with two two of them, you, you have a very limited amount of time that they're going to sit still. And 90 minutes is a stretch almost, but if you fit it in that, you can usually keep them through. But if you mm. pad out the movie to two hours just to hit, hit a level. Oh, um, and you got a theater full of kids like also yeah. hitting that breaking point. Right, so by the time Sim- Simba grows up and they're singing Hakuna Matata, you, you start to hear a little ruckus in theater. But like, by the time, why isn't this over yet? <laughs> yeah, by the time <laughs> and it's he's from headed the back to Pride Rock, <laughs> when he sees Nala again, by that time, you know, people are just holding their kids tight, like just keeping them steady. Right. So, I mean, that's that's probably a miss to, to make it longer, just keep it what it is. But sure. But it, it, it was, there was a really cool little uh, extension to, um, do you remember uh, in the in the cartoon when they sing uh, The Lion Sleeps Tonight? Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they extended that, and then all the animals of uh, the area where Timon and Pumbaa live joined in, and it was really cool. You got a, a oh, much bigger awesome. view of, uh, of that area. So that was cool. And um, the only other thing I would say for for parents or for, or, or for anybody that's uh, bringing kids to this is that I don't know if it was an un- unexpected or unintended consequence, but those moments that emotionally jarred you in the cartoon are so much worse in this because you're dealing with real animals. You know, when it's not a cartoon Mufasa getting trampled by wildebeest, it's, oh. it looks like a real... So somebody like my wife, for instance, who's one of those big animal lovers, she'll my, watch... My mom was going to hate this movie. Yeah, it's, uh, you know... Those people, you, you know, of your mom's probably one of them. That you'll watch a movie, forty-seven people will get killed, but then a horse falls over, and they're like, "Oh my God, no!" And it becomes the worst movie ever yeah. made. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. So uh, those people will probably have a little trouble with it. Well, you know, it's not a puppy, so she might be able to distance herself. I don't know how much she cares about lions. Yeah, or well, lion. they're like big cats, so. I'm not, um, like it, not a cat person, so we're fine. <laughs> Seth Rogen was awesome as Pumbaa. He's probably he's got to be the highlight of the movie. Ah, oh, he's great. I love um, his podcast. And uh, and Donald Glover was great. I mean, I, all, all the voice acting was really good. His Short dad, Danny, is amazing. Danny Glover, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's getting too old for this shit though. So he, he couldn't is. be in the movie. It's true. Um, so <laughs> you know, all in all, I, I think I think Lion King is really really well worth it. I mean, it's as far as a, a, a live action remake goes. Mm-hmm. If they keep doing it like this, I don't see any problem. You know, the Mulan trailer just dropped. That looks awesome. So I heard there's there's no reason for them to stop doing it. Yeah, is it a cash grab? Sure, but is it unnecessary? No. Is it Without it, without its merits, no, it's got plenty of merits to it. So uh, keep it up, you know. So uh, yeah, I, I have I have seen a lot of articles about sort of that live action fatigue that Disney's going through, mm. in that sort of uh, you know, are people going to rally around live action remakes of all the of all the animated classics? Like, what's the point of redoing the story over again in live action? Is yeah. it to promote diversity of character, to just keep churning out things that people already like the storyline on, to sell more toys? Like, sooner or later, Disney's going to have to come up with something new. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, well, yeah, they really do. They can't, they can't use this as their, as their, uh, their, their backbone. You know, they can't use no. it as, as their primary. If they want to do one of these for every two original movies, that's, that's totally fine. I mean, if they get back down to the point where they're doing, like, the rescuers or or god forbid uh, the old country bears movie or something like that in live action <laughs> um or, you know when, what if they, they did robin hood when, when disney does song of the south in live action oh. and then we're, we're done they're, they're done as a studio but yeah well robin hood with the fox yeah i would but love then to if it's see live that. action do you just do it with a fox yeah you, it, yeah you do everything with the real animals i would do that if that was the last one that they did i'd be okay with that yeah. Because I really enjoyed that that whole movie. It was you know it was the soundtrack too. And this was again this was a this was one of the Disney movies that I saw when I was like a wee bab. Like that was mm-hmm. like a an old school movie. But uh, um, I really liked it. I don't know why it was so different. Um, wasn't there an owl well, called cool. Archimedes in I that think, one? I think or is that is that the other Clash one? Clash of the Titans. Isn't that, no, it's the Sorcerer in the Stone. Sword in the Stone. Oh yeah, so, so, so stone. is it Sword or Sorcerer? I think I don't know. Whatever. There's the Sorcerer's Apprentice and Sword in the Stone. Right. Um, no, I mean, uh, yeah, Robin both Hood classic Nick Cage movies. Was, was one of the uh, <laughs> one of the classics from our, you know, honestly, our generation didn't really have that many Disney classics. It was like the next next generation after us. Oh, we, know, we had Little Mermaid. No, that we wasn't. Had, I mean, I don't really consider. I was that. five. You're older than me, aren't you? Yeah. Didn't Little that Mermaid come out in the eighties? Like Eighty nine. Okay, so I was eight. That is my childhood. Okay, fair enough. All right. <laughs> I'm bad with time. We had Little Mermaid, on. Lion. We had the best ones. Hunchback of Notre Dame. Like we had. Yeah, I was considering all of those as the next generation, but I guess it's our generation. We but were. If you're under ten when an animated film comes out, that's your generation's movie. Fair enough. Okay, so so then my generation stopped at like Aladdin. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because then the next one. Yeah. Because we did. We we didn't get Brave 
or Mulan. Right. I haven't even seen some of them because I was oh, no. like, from that's like, not for me. From like 92, uh, I'd say 95 to uh, 2001, there's a bunch of great Disney and, and, and cursory animated movies that I had never seen that I'm starting to discover with my kids. Stuff like Atlantis, I think it's Atlantis, is mm -hmm. it? And, um, and uh, what's the one that there's a bunch of them? Rodale Dorado. All those. They, I mean, they're, they're pretty good, but, you know, from the 70s to the 80s, 70s to the mid 80s, there was really no good. Uh, I can't think of any. Really Can you guys see? Good. Oh, we got him on video. Hold on. I was just doing a call. Uh, let me uh, let me see. Hold on. Let me get this video turned on. While we get Travis into the Hold video. Hold on. Here. Let me. Travis is it's all right. Been a so you've got. At Comic -Con. I haven't seen Travis in the beard a long time. You can see. Uh, well, hold on. You you can see the the wrong video. <laughs> So we've got, hold on, we can put you in, but we're not going to be able to have you be able to see us, if that's okay. Um, that's okay. I don't, don't, don't want to look at you guys. The studio, <laughs> I, can see the, I can see the studio, the studio seats, and that's just, that's just the spot. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to have Tommy go and sit out in the studio audience just so that you can see us. Um, so hold on, let, let's, uh, let's take a pause, and uh, so we're going to switch over. Well, that was to Child's Play. To Child's Play, that's... Uh, that is not supposed to happen. That was supposed to go to our Well, SCCC. we got Travis on audio, right? So while we do have Travis on audio, so let's just go to the over, um, let's, let's go to the main uh, main switchboard. Drew's gonna get his audio, SCCC his video over there. But uh, in the meanwhile, we were hey. just talking about Lion King. I know you sounded like you had pretty much the same thoughts as I did that it, it's annoying as hell. All these people that are trying to trash it for whatever reason, uh, that it was really good on some merits. Well, I think the the dumbest argument to make about the Lion King is that it's too familiar. Well, what the fuck do you think it's supposed to be? I mean. If they had changed too much about it, then uh, people would have complained. Um, now, is it perfect? No. Uh, can you do the same stuff with the, I'm outside, in case you couldn't tell. I'm outside. I don't know if you can see everything going on around here. It's still a little, still a little crazy out here, um, here on the last day of Comic-Con. Um, but yeah, the, if, one of the things I, I still have beef with with the Lion King, the, the new version, is that you can't quite have the expressive... Uh, the expressive uh, looks, and you can't quite get some of the emotion that you could with, with hand-drawn animation. But I don't. It, it did not affect my ability to connect with the material at all. I right. still felt the same as I felt with. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's just a really powerful story, no matter how it's told. It is. And and sure. my my point overall is that is that this story is such a good one. That it deserves to be redone for every generation. Um, about a month or so ago, I did a uh, coming attractions, which is with me and uh, you know Tim Gordon. We we host a, a trailer night, mm -hmm. and I asked a lot of people in the crowd, "How many of you have seen some of these old, the classics that Disney is remaking, like Aladdin and The Lion King?" They were coming up at the time, and uh, almost half the audience raised their hand and said they hadn't seen either of them, wow. and which is you know, that's crazy really? to uh, that's crazy. It's crazy to us. But it's the truth. A lot of people have not gone back and seen these movies. And and I think they deserve to be passed on in whatever form, whatever technology is needed for people to see them. So I'm happy with the fact that Disney does this. And look, it wasn't a cheap cash grab. If it was a cheap cash grab, we would all be saying that, but it's not. They put a lot of effort, a lot of money, and a lot of a lot of talent behind this movie to make it happen. So that's not just some cheap cash grab. So I appreciate that. Yeah. So for sure. Those yeah, and, that, and that jives kind of with what I was saying. Uh, you know, the, the only really issues I had with the movies was what, what you were mentioning about the expressiveness. And um, I'm guessing that's because we were talking about earlier. It's not obviously mocap. It's got to be full. So you lose some of the, the expressiveness you can get. And then, right. um, you know, I, I just. Made a few small changes to the dialogue. Um, I don't think the song, I don't think Beyonce works. Like her song doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And I don't. Her duet with Donald Glover, uh, "Can You Feel the Love Tonight?" I don't think it works, but um, overall, I didn't have a whole lot of complaints. Other than they should have kept Rafiki doing his martial arts thing at the end, I was a little disappointed <laughs> by that. Yeah. So I was disappointed it didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? It, it was. I, I think they could have done a little bit more with it, but I was really glad to see. And maybe this was in the original. I just don't remember it. But that Nala and the Lioness group took a more active stance in the fight. Like, they were... they were. No, they changed that. They gave them more to do. Similar to what they yeah. did in Aladdin, gave Princess Jasmine more of a, a motivation right. uh, to be more 
just uh, looking for a husband. Um, they gave the the lionesses the pride, uh, more of a warrior spirit. They had more. It took more of an active role in their own uh, freedom in this mm-hmm. movie, which I think is the right thing to do. That's how you make the, that's how you make these movies more timely by doing little things like that. And they right. didn't have to fundamentally change the, the the original story to do that. This is a good move. For sure. Yeah. So I know you're outside and you've got things to do, uh, but just give us, you know, the biggest thing, I, I think th- that it's kind of a surprise. We didn't think Marvel was going to have too much of a presence this year until a couple of weeks ago. And then Marvel comes out with their big presence on Saturday night. And it's, it's the biggest news out of Comic-Con. You were in Hall H. What was, what was it like? I can't, I can't even express to you how nuts last night was. Uh, I've been coming to Comic-Con for many years. I've been to a lot of Marvel panels. This was the biggest, the biggest night I've ever seen from Marvel. It was absolutely shitballs insane being in there in the middle of all that. And uh, like you said, just a couple of weeks ago, they weren't no, no, they weren't going to be here. It wasn't until after Warner Brothers had said they weren't going to be here that Marvel stepped up and said, "Hey, we're we're going to come now." Uh, this is the first time they've been here since 2017, so it's been a couple of years. Yeah. Um, and it was just for 90 minutes, it was just one announcement after another, and it was absolutely wild. Um, yeah, it was just, I think they dropped about 10 or 11 huge bombshells and they didn't give people a chance to, to really recover from any of them. They just kept dropping them on us. Uh, starting with the Eternals cast coming out, Richard Madden starting things off, uh, Angelina Jolie kicking things, uh, uh, kind of capping things off for that, that part of the panel. Um, I, and I, I didn't think they were going to go through the, the Disney plus shows at all last night. I figured they would save them for D23 in a couple in a few weeks. Right. Uh, but they dropped virtually everything on those. Um, geez, it was just absolutely insane the entire night. I mean, the place was going wild. I was going wild. So my uh, biggest shock was Mar- Marshall. Uh, I can't even say his name. Ali is, 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 is yeah. Say it for me. Mahershala. 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 What am I saying? Mar- Mahershala Ali has has been uh, cast as Blade. That was my biggest shock. But what what was the biggest reaction in the room? And what was the biggest shock for you? That was the dead last thing that they did last night was the Mahershala thing. Mm-hmm. He came right at the end. And it was funny because he came out, he did it right after he had mentioned the Fantastic Four and Mutants, mm-hmm. uh, which we know is X Men. And he had mentioned them as basically saying, we didn't even have time to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy 3, Black Panther 2, Captain Marvel 2, uh, the Fantastic Four, and Mutants. Which, of course, the crowd was going wild at that point after just hearing that. Uh, some people have jumped the gun and said that means they're working on a Fantastic Four and X-Men films. That He didn't say anything of the sort. Right. Uh, he kind of mentioned them in, in general, but he didn't say anything about what they would be or even when they would arrive. I would say they're not going to arrive until Phase 5 at the earliest. Whereas we're going into Phase 4 now. Uh, we won't see them in Phase 4, I don't think. So but he dropped them a Hershey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Marshall Island thing was dropped right at the end. I think that was probably the biggest reaction. Really? Uh, of the night. And in a in a in a ninety minutes that was just full of them all 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 across the board. Uh it's absolutely absolutely wild. I, I, I'm dying to hear what Wesley Snipes has to say about it. It's not gonna be good. <laughs> if I'm honest, I'm not unconvinced that Wesley Snipes still won't have a role. Whistler. Who's to say that? Snipes won't get won't be cast as Whistler or something like that. Exactly, Whistler is perfect. I, I mean, I have a feeling that Wesley is still going to be involved in this somehow. Mm. Um, that'd be cool. I think that'd be cool. I think they can still do that. I think they can still do that. Um, but we'll see. But the Marshall Ali thing, you can't, you can hardly complain about an Oscar winner. Yeah. Uh, taking on the role of Blade. So it's just, it's just insane. An amazing night. The Arguably the best night I've ever had in Hall H was last night. It was absolutely crazy. Wow. Wow. And that's saying a lot. Because, I mean, in the last – in the years since you've been going, there's been some pretty freaking big bombshells. I, I know some of which you've at least been in the room for. So, it's just uh, yeah. very unexpected. I mean, you got crazy things like, uh, you know, one of the people that everybody thought was very unhappy with their time in the Marvel Universe coming back to, to play the female Thor. And that's Natalie Portman's Jane Foster coming back for Thor Love and Thunder. That's nuts. America's walking by. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it was old, it was old style cap too. It was like old cap, like <laughs> I just returned from the past cap. Right. But anyway, would you like to be on our show, sir? No, I don't think I will. <laughs> <laughs> he probably has no idea what I'm doing. 
Right. But uh, I gotta go. I gotta get ready to run out of here, guys. Um, okay. I'm gonna hit the show floor for a little bit longer than we're we're wrapping up uh, four days of Comic Con. So, but uh, time out, man. Awesome, man. Thanks so much for joining us. Really happy to yeah. have you on my show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on a, on my show, it's 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 awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. We'll see you guys later. Have awesome, a good man. Thanks, Thanks so much for calling. Later. Later. Yeah, so Tra obviously Travis will be back in next week, and we'll, we'll do a, a full rundown. I, I'd like to even see if we can get a remote show going midweek somewhere so this stuff doesn't cool, and we can give you guys the full rundown of everything you saw there. Uh, the, the man is nothing if not dedicated to his hall. I don't think I, tell I have you the what. patience. I, like, I, number one, I don't have the money to go to Comic-Con, and I don't mean uh, hotels and plane tickets. I mean the amount of money I know I would spend on that floor because I am like a drug addict in, in a drug den when I, when I get around that stuff. It's just... Yes. I don't know if that does that work. I don't know what. Sure. You, you know what I mean? Absolutely. I, I mean, drug I, den, drug living room, drug kitchen. Yeah, you know. Um, so <laughs> I, I see this stuff, and all of a sudden, every piece of pop culture ever made is my favorite thing of all time, and I have to have it. I am a little bit the same way. Mm. So what I do at conventions um, that is a, a little bit unconventional, uh, <laughs> I I I I. I I get all the autographs and, and selfies and pictures. Yeah. I don't, and I, cause I've done, you know, I, I worked, obviously I still run hashtag comics and uh, hashtag comics.com for all your comic book needs. Um, but now we're in, you know, sort of that children's book market of going to schools and, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So we don't really even need, we don't, it's not that we don't need, we could probably benefit from shows, but we just don't go to them anymore. Um, but because of that, I got to know the shows from like the exhibitor level. Right. And so I knew I'd be there the whole time mm -hmm. so if you're there from open to close and you've got other people working with you as i do i usually had like a full crew of people working for me there mm -hmm. they would run the booth and i would wander around so mm -hmm. i would literally spend all day walking these shows so i could get there an hour and a half before the show opened get probably half the con floor walked and then do that twice in a row you know at the beginning at the end of the day and i see what i need to see i usually stop by the artist alley uh check out to see if there's anybody that really needs a job Right. Uh, Cause I was scouting for obviously for comic book talent as well, which means make sure to go to our Sally. If you're an artist, go to Artist Sally. Guys like me scout all the time. I got a writer from there. He was actually amazing. That's where I got David Rodriguez. Yeah. Uh, David Rodriguez, for those of the, you that don't know, was our writer on books three and four of the cloud rider series. Uh, he also did all uh, like 10 different books on Skylanders. He also wrote the storyline for destiny Two. And all that's um, available on Amazon, right? So they can if yeah, pick it up. Yeah, yeah. Well, you might as well tell where they can buy All it. of that is available on Amazon uh, unless you're Destiny 2, which Destiny 2 is a video game. He wrote the storyline for that. Um, so if you've played the actual campaign for Destiny 2, that was by David Rodriguez of uh, Hashtag Comics fame. I, don't, I wouldn't say it was Hashtag Comics fame. Of Skylanders fame. He also did some Transformers stuff. And yeah. He's a super big writer. So. <laughs> you know, it's, and that's something I'd actually like to see a documentary on. And, and so in the last 10 years, and I'm getting completely off track here, but this, the, the con, everybody knows obviously the, the con uh, culture has grown vastly. But it, not just San Diego, all these little cons to the point where you used to get maybe like um, the guy who was the the villain in that '80s action movie you liked a lot, Dolph or, Lundgren, or, or like um, <laughs> or yeah, well, just a random guy, enter, enter right? There. Billy and Zapka some some before. some WWE guys, yeah, and and like like a Friday the Thirteenth Part Four reunion, you know, something right? Like that. That's yeah. the kind of stuff you get. You'll but get the guy that played played Freddy Krueger. He used to do the circuit a lot, right? But um, nowadays, I mean, it's gotten more and more legitimate for people to do this. I mean, and this, the fact is, like, uh, I, I saw a report last year that Norman Reedus. Gets a guaranteed five hundred grand every time he goes to one of these, and he could make more than that depending on the the, uh, the interviews he gets. But they give him a guaranteed price. So, uh, you know, it's it's obvious why these people are doing it. Yeah, I, but that that's got to only be San Diego. No, There's, no, that's not. That's his. That's I think it was. They were the one they were talking about was an Australian con. But but that's his guarantee. That's how many people he pulls in for that. And there's a number of people like that. That top tier, <sighs> they pull in money like that. But the the cool thing is behind the scenes. And if you if you pay attention, you look closely that's behind the nice. like the B movie actors. You'll see certain people work together, and if you go to a lot of these cons, you'll notice that they started working together a couple of years ago, and that they're always at the same cons. So you're getting a lot of these networking connections at these cons between these actors. Well, weirdly enough, and you are correct, like mm -hmm. the 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 show. So we actually built, and it's funny, I'll I can back back through this, but uh, the reason why I created a a, a company and uh, a group called Con Collective was because everyone that I met at the con industry 
was were were fun because you know what you don't what you see when you're at shows is everybody's there everybody's working but then some of these especially like four day shows you're there a day before you stay up till sunday mm -hmm. you're there at the same hotel bar every night with the same 35 people yeah that you know so you get to know everybody you get to become like you get to befriend them you can show up and be like hey Hey, and then and then you get the free selfies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the ones you want to spend thirty bucks for, yeah. But it's so funny because I was like, it, it became. I don't know if you watched Comic Book Men, but Ming Chen, of course, yeah. uh, Ming Chen became like one of my favorite people of all time. He and became we became pretty much everybody's favorite. He person was, at is cons, is yeah. pretty great, but he was so friendly, and we would just hang out. And every time we would go, he would. I, I would be like, I would stand in line for a selfie or whatever, you know, to get my. I would pay forty bucks. I'd get like this, and he would literally push my money back and be like. Come over here, buddy. And he yeah. he invented the hashtag gang sign. Oh yeah. And it was it was awesome. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so he, you know, and we we created a whole group around that. But it actually what these conventions and the popularity of the celebrity convention did was create an entire stream of income for these guys. What's called life after film. So basically, the convention circuit for B actors, horror movie, anybody that's in that sort of supernatural. Uh, world if you're in a mutant movie mm -hmm. a friend of mine was in like two episodes of whatever that TV show was if you make an impression on a show for however short you can hit these cons and people will come Dude, a friend of mine was on three episodes of True Blood and and two episodes of a Marvel series mm -hmm. and uh, Inhumans she was on Inhumans before that got canceled um, and now she could literally do cons whenever she wants to. She yeah. could do it on HBO circuit. She could do it on Marvel circuit. And they'll be like, oh, I remember that girl. She had a threesome with the werewolf. I'm like, okay. Right. Like <laughs> I mean, it's not, to get into the financials of it, I mean, we, we look at it, we're like, how much money can you make in cons? And let's be honest, if the average income in America is, you know, between 40 and 50,000 or something like that, they can make that doing this easily. They're not going to make... Uh, you know, uh, big time movie money, but they're gonna they're, they'll probably make a hundred grand if they go to enough of these cons. There's cons every single weekend. Yeah. And if you only usually there's five people, ten yeah, a weekend. You, that you can choose five from. people a day, paying forty bucks one. That's two hundred dollars a day. That's more yep. than most of us make in a day. Um, yep. I, I will say though, it is sometimes it's got to be soul crushing at times because your entire existence is based off of a very visual, very palpable measure of who likes you. Because <laughs> you, you it's could, true. You, you know, you have nobody at your table. Oh the my god. The saddest thing I ever saw. I was so glad to see that. Uh, uh, what was uh, what's the bad guy's name in Karate Kid Part One? Not Billy Zabka, but the, the teacher, um, Kane, Martin Kane, Martin yep. Cove, Martin, Martin Cove. Cove. Saddest thing I ever saw in my life was at horrifying convention in like 2011. Before he, I was so glad to see him come back on the, on um, uh, Crow Will Cry because of this. He was at, at had his table at a convention. They put him in kind of a weird place, and people were just walking by him. Nobody was at his table. He was just looking bored, and I'm sure he wasn't depressed by it. But I just, it was a sad thing to see. I was yeah. like, I want to give this guy a hug. But well, you know, and and it's funny. There, there's a lot of different things. So I, as a, I'm also a convention organizer. Uh, go to hashtagcon.com to see where our next one is. Um, but as a con organizer, and the, the reason why that Norman Reedus dollar figure mm -hmm. uh, blew my mind was the entire cost of my entire convention mm -hmm. was four hundred and forty thousand dollars. Wow! My entire—that's every actor, every voice actor, every cosplayer, every musical guest, all added together well, was less than a single Norman Reedus it, like pay or play. Well, I mean, that's insane. Norman I mean, Reedus I'm sure they could do it. People from a, a, I get it. You know. He's not going to bring you a hundred thousand people paying five bucks a head, like. He'll well, they're also not paying that, just to be clear. So, so in, in it's, a, it's a guarantee, so it's a possible liability. So they're saying if you don't make 500 grand, and, and remember, the biggest names, the, whenever you see people with those pictures, you know, they're doing a funny picture with Elijah Wood or something like mm. that with a backdrop, they paid almost 200 bucks. Yeah, that, that cost them a yeah, lot of money. Yeah, that cost a lot of money. So yeah. it, what they're saying is... Maybe for him it's a lot bigger because I know when they did it with like Sly Stallone. Yeah. Sly Stallone, if you wanted a picture... And an autograph. It was nine hundred dollars. Yeah, I mean, and it's, it's, Chloe Moretz, same deal. Was, Hers was, was like seven fifty. And, and that pisses me off as something for another time, but <laughs> but because it, it's like these are your fans that you're gouging. Like the guys, I, I am a diehard Supernatural fan, right? Mm. Uh, always love the show. I've watched every episode three or four times. I'm probably the only straight man in America that that can say that because uh, it's 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 pretty much a show for that only women like. Mm. I love I love Supernatural. No, this is true. O um, only women like that show. I. I it's not literally, not literally like that. But <laughs> anyway, so they had a they like the moose. They had a supernatural con uh, in DC a couple years ago. Really? Yeah. And shoot. And uh, I really and have wanted to go to that. Jed I love that Nichols show. Jed and Jerry Padalecki uh, came and were and were doing uh, uh, signings, and they put the figures up for him. It was like hundred and fifty dollars for a picture with one, 
three hundred dollars for a pitcher with both of them at the same time. That is not and savings. I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, I'm like, all right, you guys are. By contrast to the bigger shows, you're a lower-rated show on a smaller network that's stayed alive for 11. You've, you've kept your paying 15, jobs 15 for seasons? 15 seasons now. It was like 13 seasons, 300 shows. Seasons then yeah, 300 Because shows. of the fans that you are now gouging. It's, instead of just saying thank you, charge 20, 50 bucks, whatever. Charge the money, yeah. make, make some money. But 200 bucks to sit with somebody for three seconds is, is ridiculous. And it, it honestly yeah. is the only thing that ever gave me a bad taste in my mouth about those guys in that show. So I don't, I don't know, I don't know the details of their uh, distribution, obviously, or their, or their structuring for syndication. I know this, the show is syndicated already. It's um, on TBS 473 times a day. Yeah. yeah. So, and <laughs> which is a lot for a half hour show, or is it an hour? Hour. Hour show. Dang. Um, but so to put it into perspective, so they've been able to renegotiate their contracts. I don't know if they keep intentionally low contracts to keep getting invited back because the writers don't seem to ever have like an ending to the story. This so, season's the last one. So yeah, so this season is the last season, but let's put it into perspective. So they've had 15 seasons worth, that's not years, they've had 15 seasons worth of like 15 to 22 episode seasons. Like mm -hmm. they do long ass seasons for that show. They've had 15 seasons to be able to renegotiate their contract in one year tranches, two year, five year, however long they want to work out those contracts. The way that syndication works, is that when it's when uh, it's usually negotiated, but when a country or a region negotiates that syndication value for you, mm -hmm. you get that money again. Whatever your highest contract value was, mm -hmm. when the show syndicates for that country, that's your contract all over again. Yeah, so you're getting paid. You think? To put it into perspective, uh, a friend of mine, Jeremy, was on this show called Entourage, and Jay was syndicated. He's, he was telling me he was... Uh, they were syndicated in 143 territories, and a lot of them got between half a million dollars and two million dollars per episode mm -hmm. for that syndication. So, do the math there. If you're getting a million dollars a show, and then you get a million dollars a show times, I think they had 11 shows in their final season. Mm -hmm. So you're getting 11 million dollars times 143. You don't need to, the, long, the, the moral of the story is you don't need to charge the people that made that possible for you. Right. Ridiculous so, amounts right. of money. It Calling a, a good callback, you don't need yeah. to charge that much. However, depending on the, the, their, their syndication agreements um, and, and their contracts, they may just be trying to get out. I mean, the, but after this, they probably don't ever have to do anything ever again. Well, yeah, no, probably not. But, uh, but even if, even if their, their syndication contracts suck, even if they weren't renegotiating, blame your agents for that. Blame the studios for that. Don't take it out on the people that are keeping you employed by watching your show and going to the merch. Yeah, I'm the off WB. Our rant and, and Travis is going to lose <laughs> his shit when he finds out I spent 10 minutes talking about Supernatural on the show because he hates it when I do that. But um, uh, just to wrap, I know well, you got to hit the road. I do you, have to you, leave. You, um, uh, any other big stuff from Comic Con? I'm blanking now. We got the, uh, the Watchmen trailer. I watched it. I still don't really understand what it's about. Looks like it'll be pretty cool. Um, we got the Witcher trailer with Henry Cavill. Right. That looks amazing, actually. I never, I, I've never gotten the games, mm. but it looks amazing. So my friends that are, my friends that are Witcher fans and have played Witcher, I have not, but I have a lot of friends that are absolutely obsessed with it. They said the only thing that they don't enjoy about the film so far is the inaccuracy of the costumes, because <laughs> all my friends are cosplayers and cosplayers are gamers and they absolutely love that game and they costume and they cosplay as those, as those characters right. and they're just like what is up with the thing on Geralt's chest or whatever the guy's name is yeah and they were like that's i don't like that at all i saw that yeah that's not that screen accuracy needs to be a little right. bit different that they pay oh. attention but if you're doing fan service anyway go and ahead. i almost forgot jay and silent bob reboot trailer hit um ah yes wow he had you know i i'm a diehard kevin smith fan and and our buddy uh local local uh tv luminary now kevin mccarthy apparently was behind the uh the Kevin Smith Ben Affleck reunion. Did you see this story? No. So, uh, and I saw this, and I, I'm jealous and angry that it wasn't me, but I'm also glad he did it. So, apparently, uh, Kevin McCarthy, who's on Fox 5 TV here in the DC area, uh, had, was interviewing Ben Affleck for uh, that movie he did, the Netflix movie Triple Threat or whatever it was. Sure. Um, and he opened up with, "Have you uh, have you heard from Kevin Smith about being in Jay and Silent Bob reboot?" And Affleck's response was. I'm available if he calls me. And then apparently Kevin Smith's people uh, got wind of that, and they were telling him, oh, you know, you need to call Ben. He's saying call him because they haven't spoken in 10 years apparently. Oh, um, shit. And, uh, and 
you know, Kevin Smith was like, no, no. And, and finally it came around and he called him and, you know, they, they, uh, how to say rekindled the romance. They, they, uh, they made out. It was glorious. Uh, as you saw in the trailer, he, he makes an appearance as Holden McNeil in the, in the new movie coming out. And, uh, he went on Instagram or Twitter or something like that and, and gave the whole story and directly thanked, uh, Kevin McCarthy for, uh, putting them together no again. So how that's cool amazing. That? Yeah. So, yeah. So all I remember is that out of the blue and I, I hadn't heard of the, of the BDK thing, but, um, or I guess he's just called Kevin McCarthy now. Mm. Um, I haven't heard, I hadn't heard that. I had just seen on Twitter, uh, Ben Affleck tweeted at Kevin Smith, snoochie boochies mm -hmm. and Kevin, uh, and, and, uh, and he was like, Oh, I'm like, I'm a 15 year old kid again. Like, yeah, you know? yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that, that trailer comes out, that looks amazing. I mean, I know people are down on Kevin Smith, uh, lately. I, I, I What's kinda, wrong with Kevin I, Smith? I, I kind of like Yoga Hosers. It was fun to watch. It wasn't a great movie. Tusk. Didn't see I it. I think the problem didn't with Tusk, see it. If, if we can go into something totally different, uh, Tusk, which everybody. That was, was the horror about, film, right? The only problem with it was his reveal of what happened, like his pacing, his structure of it was wrong. About halfway through the movie, before the heroes even get to where Justin Long's character is kept, where mm. he's being turned into a walrus by this madman, okay. you find out that he's already been turned into a walrus, and he's just sitting in an in a aquarium for half the movie. So it, the, all huh. the suspense is gone. There's nothing to be saved. So that, I think, well, spoiler if it was restructured. Alert. No, I don't have to well, see it. Well, it's a six-year-old movie. So, um, That's true. If that was restructured, I think that would have been a lot lot better received movie. But long story short, Jay and Silent Reboot uh, trailer's coming out. You guys can go to punchstrongcritics.com to check out all the news from Comic-Con, all these trailers, all of that stuff in full. Yeah. Um, and I don't think, I know you got to get out of here, so I don't think we have anything else to talk about. I'm good to go. It's 10 after 3. I think we kicked some major ass. Cool. Thank you so much for being on my show today, John. <laughs> I had a lot no of fun. I, I like to be invited. Uh, well, you can come back anytime, yeah. uh, and then I don't have to do anything anymore. Smash Cut will be back next week. Uh, we're going to try and fit something in the middle of the week, uh, like we've been promising for a while now, uh, with, uh, with Travis to talk about Comic-Con. We'll see if we can work that out. If so, look on, on uh, the hashtag studios pages. Look on the punchrunkcritics.com and Punch Run Critics Facebook page. We'll let you know if it's coming out there. There. But if not, we'll be back here next Sunday, at two o'clock, with the uh, with the regular crew in tow, and, and maybe Drew will drop by as well again. No, uh, absolutely no, not. We have a huge event on Saturday. I'm gonna sleep all day Sunday. Okay, so it'll just be me and Travis. Don't forget to tune <laughs> in to all the stuff that's going on at twitchtv slash hashtag arena There you go. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next week. See ya. Later. Let's not stand on ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> just oh, wish, wish we had like that. the uh, wish we had the ending version. And now it's time to end the show. It's the, our, like our volume is still going. I haven't ended the stream yet. This is great.